any, any spirit that will not confess that any spirit that will not confess that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is not of God. But that spirit that will confess that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh is of God. So that's pretty good, isn't it? And you know, when I hear people preach, I really do like to hear the name of Jesus mentioned. Somewhere along the way. Don't you think that His name ought to be brought up if you're in church? If you're in a Christian church? I'm not interested in man's wisdom or his knowledge or his fluent abilities to speak and, and come up with messages about... Listen, let me tell you something. I believe that there are people who are good people who don't believe anything about Jesus' divinity that are good people and have and possess kindness and love and attributes that, you know, we, we just know that when the Lord's uh, in us and has, is changing us, that those are the attributes. But listen, people can preach about love and kindness and goodness and and you're treat your neighbor right and don't steal and all this stuff. But somewhere along in there, Jesus needs to be the author. He needs to be the author. His name needs to be brought up. Amen. I, or at least that's a personal kind of a way that I think about, you know, preaching should, he should be the heart and soul of it. Because he is the heart and soul, amen, of our faith. And what we... Believe. You know what? There are a lot of things that I don't understand about heaven and about earth and about generally speaking the things that are around me. I observe them. I watch. You know, today was one of the most pleasant days in my life. I was up, feeling good, had my coffee, my shredded wheat, my, my banana, went for my walk, came back and sat on the back porch. There was a wonderful breeze blowing. The neighbor's dog was barking. The birds were flying in the trees. And I was just sitting there watching it all, thinking how wonderful it is to be in this creation that I don't have a clue about how any of it works. And you might say, well, you need to go study. No, I don't. What I need to do is believe God because I know my Lord is the author, the creator. Everything begins with Him and everything will end with Him. And He has instructed me in His Word to have faith in Him, to believe in Him, and then the things that I need to know, he said, don't even take thought about what you're going to say at crunch time. He said, because what you need to say will be given to you to say at that moment in time. So, you know, I like that, don't you? I like the provision that the Lord makes. But you see, in Hebrews, the 11th chapter, Marlon and I will get to this, so don't despair. Just keep that, keep that handy right there because there's a message in that. But in the, the 11th chapter of Hebrews, starting with verse 1, 2, 3, and 4, it talks about faith and what faith is and how faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. And by it, the elders obtained a good report. And he went on further to say that through faith, we understand that the worlds were framed by the Word of God. And that's what I believe. And I believe that everything in the world, even though I don't, I don't, I don't, I can tell you again, I don't understand why things are altogether the way they are and why there are so many things in the earth you know, in creation, if you will, that are maybe, you know, have potential to be unpleasant. 
But I know it's there and I know that God has reasons. I believe that He has reasons for everything. And um, everything that He has created and brought, brought out. But you see, it's not, you know, in the army, I really don't remember if the army, army said this or not. They probably did, but at some point along the way. I don't think this is one of their official doctrines, though. It's just like if you had a smart aleck platoon sergeant, and, you know, he, he wanted to make sure you obeyed him. He said, yours is not the reason why. Yours is just to do or to die. And so, you know, with the Lord, I'm not trying to reason it out any longer. I used to think about it and say, Lord, you know, I don't, I don't understand why things are the way they are, you know. I don't understand why there's evil in the world, but again, it's not mine to reason why. Mine is just to believe the Lord, and then I won't die. I'll live. Amen. So anyhow... The point of my little message here tonight is, uh, well, we'll see it as we read through here. Marlon, I'll start now, so you keep up with me, okay? And y'all can just follow along. Mark chapter 4, verse 21. He said unto them, this is the Lord, he said, Is a candle brought to be put under a bushel or under a bed, and not to set it on a candle stick? <laughs> For there is nothing hid which shall not be manifested, neither was anything kept secret, but that it should come abroad. He said, if any man have ears to hear, let him hear. And, and you know, somehow or the other, church, if you'll allow me to use the word mysterious. How many of y'all know that there are just mysteries all around us? But somehow or the other, in a, in a mysterious way, I believe that the understanding or wisdom that we will need as we go along and as we live will be given to us from the Lord, from the spirit and the mind of Jesus Christ. Because the Apostle Paul said of him that all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge are in him. So, and if I have ears to hear, and if I let my ears hear just this word that the Lord is saying, that the word will of itself produce wisdom, understanding, and that if I need knowledge or information, it will bring it to me. You know, John said something interesting in one of his letters. He said that, we have an unction from the Holy One so that, so that we know all things. And, you know, it, it's just uh, amazing to think about these things. Well, again, you, you need to understand this, that the Lord is the giver. The Lord is the author. He's the one that makes the provision for you when you need a provision. And church, there are times in all of our lives where we need provision from the Lord. You know, man helps us, but there are times when we just need, we need, you know, what the Lord does, don't we? So anyhow, if a man have ears to hear, let him hear. And then he goes on a little further here. Watch this as we read along. He, he said unto them, Jesus did, he said, Take heed what you hear, and with what measure you me. Whatever it is that you're giving out, what you're measuring out, he says, it shall be measured to you. And to you that hear shall the more be given. The more of whatever it is that you need will be given if you listen to the word of the Lord. And it is, church, the word of the Lord that is vital. Man. Amen. And it is the Spirit of God that keeps this moving. It is the Spirit of the Lord that keeps me moving. And even though I don't move as quickly and fast and energetically as I used to do, it's still Him that keeps me on the, on the move. And I thank the Lord every morning when my eyes pop open and I, you know, become aware that it's daylight. And that I can get up 
and I can move around. I thank the Lord. I said, Lord, thank you for some more. Amen? Amen. And whatever it is that I can do with this day, let me do it. Amen? And, you know, help me through it and help me do it. So anyhow, Jesus said, take heed what you hear, and with what measure you meet it out, it will be measured to you. And unto you that hear shall more be given. Verse 25, he said, For he that hath to him shall be given, and he that hath not from him shall be taken, even that which he, even that which he hath. So if you're not hearing and paying attention and putting the word of Jesus as, as the first thing in your life or in your mind, and don't let all the other junk in the, in the world crowd it out. Amen. He said, I'll give you more, and I'll give you more, and I'll give you more as you go along. Now, the good part of this we're getting to right now, and not, not that the rest of that wasn't good, this is just kind of the, the driving home point right here. Jesus said in verse 26, He said, So is the kingdom of God. It is as if a man should cast seed into the ground. And the word, remember, is the seed. So Jesus is putting seed, His words of eternal life, His words of supernatural abilities, His words of healing, His words of power. He's placing the word in your mind and in your ear so that you hear it. And as you hear it, amen, it just takes on a miraculous kind of an activity in you. He says in verse 27, he says, It is as if a man should cast seed into the ground and, and should sleep. I'm good at that. Are y'all? And rise night and day, and the seed should spring up and grow up. And he knoweth not how, for the earth brings forth fruit of herself, first the blade, then the ear, after that the full corn in the ear, but when the fruit is brought forth, immediately he puts in the sickle, because the harvest is come. Now for the next ten minutes or so that I have with you here this evening, I want to dwell on he knoweth not how. He says he plants the seed into the ground. And he sleeps, he rises night and day. The seed springs up. And the seed grows up. He knoweth not how it does it. And I'll just have to tell y'all tonight that I don't know how that it does it either. I'm sure that there are some agri majors somewhere that have broken it down and studied the seed and tried to figure it out. But I, I still don't think that the best of them can tell you how that life comes, how that seed produces, and how that seed grows, and how it develops, and how it is that the earth brings forth of herself. You see, the earth is a living, created, physical being that the Lord has, has fixed it so that seed in it, the earth will just grow it and produce fruit of herself. He said, first the blade, the ear, and after that the full corn in the ear. And full corn in the ear is a mature, it is a seed, that has grown and listen I don't know how it is that the Lord set that up to do that but I will tell you that I believe this that I believe that the Lord set it up so that that seed would germinate in the earth and the earth would cause it to grow and you just sleep and you watch it and the first thing you know you have an ear of corn now what do you do with the ear of corn 
Well, if you're like me, you shuck it and you eat it. But you know, wisdom says take some corn seed and preserve it. For what purpose? So you can replant it. So that you have one little kernel comes into a bunch of kernels and then you just keep sowing and growing and developing. Amen. How does it happen? I don't care how it happens. All I need to know is that I put the seed in the ground and it grows. And the Lord said, so is the kingdom of heaven. It works like this. I put my word in you. My word grows and develops. It's in the earth. And it will produce fruit. It will produce God-like fruit. It will, it will produce power. It will produce healings. It will produce wisdoms and just church. Everything that you would need that God knows that we have need of, that seed will bring that. To, and that's what Jesus is saying here in Mark is that this seed grows and this seed produces. How it does it? I don't know how God does things. I don't know how except to say to you that I understand that the worlds were framed by the Word of God. And that's all the knowing that I need to know as far as how the Word went out and how the Word brought light out of darkness and created, created the day and the night and the earth and everything that is in the earth. Church, that's as far as I'm going with it. I'm not going to get into a debate with God about how He does things or why He does things. And, you know, suffice it to say that if He does it or if He allows it, then it'll be fine. It will work out. I think that there is a scripture that Paul used in Romans 8 and 28. He said, for we know that all things are going to work together for good to them that love God and are the call according to His purposes. You know, in Jesus, when He was ministering, one of the first things that He did on the third day, it says in John chapter 2, verse number 1, Marlon, if you don't mind showing that to everybody, Jesus attended a wedding. He and His disciples attended a wedding. And you know, this is the first miracle recorded that Jesus did in Cana of Galilee. He turned water into wine. And, you know, the governor of the feast was astounded that at the end of the feast, when everybody else was well, had well drunk and wine was depleted, that now you have six huge pots of the best wine there ever was that really was not wine. It was water. And somehow or the other, as they dipped it and poured it, then the water was turned into wine. Now I'll tell you, church, I don't know how God did that. I don't know how Jesus did that. I don't know how the seed springs up and grows. There are so many things in the Scripture that we see that God has done that I don't think there's a man anywhere, the smartest among us, and by the way, they say that the smartest among us go crazy first, but the smartest among us cannot figure out how water could turn into wine. Or look at this next illustration in John chapter 3. It says, there was a man of the Pharisees, this is verse 1, Marlon, named Nicodemus. And Jesus told him, He said, Nicodemus, for you to see the kingdom of God, you must be born again. Nicodemus said to Jesus, How? How can a man that is old be born again? It didn't make any sense to Nicodemus. But to Jesus, it made perfect sense. And, you know, on down in there, the Lord told Nicodemus, He said, you know, if I tell you earthly things, 
and you don't understand what I'm talking about, how are you going to understand if I speak to you of heavenly things? How are you going to understand? Church, the point of this tonight is this, that the Word of God, amen, ends all debate. The Word of God is life. And the Word of God is a creative force and a source. And it is what you and I need to trust and be in harmony with, amen, to the best of our ability. Not be trying to figure out, well, you know, in John chapter 6, when the Lord was talking to the people there about His you know, about himself, and he said, I'm that bread that came down from heaven, and I, I am that bread that came down from heaven. And they were saying, well, you know, you're Joseph and Mary's son, so how then can you say that you're bread from heaven? And so the Lord, you know, later on in that he was telling them, he said, except you eat my flesh, and drink my blood, you have no life in you. And they said, how? How can a man, how can he give us his flesh to eat? How can he give us his flesh to eat? Church, let me assure you that he can do it. And it's not up to me to try to figure out how he does it. It's just enough to know that I know he does give us his body and his flesh and his word and his spirit. He gives us of himself. And we we take that in, if you will. We 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 just take it into our spirit and our heart and we trust it and we and we believe it. How would a woman be cured of an issue of blood that she had twelve years when she had searched physician after physician to help her and spend every penny? And just touching the hem of his garment, the faith that was in her, Jesus said, Woman, your faith has made you whole. How does that work? I just need to know that faith will do things that I don't understand. I don't need to try to explain it. I don't need to try. I can't explain it. All I know is that God is a miracle worker. I know that His Word is a life giver. And I know that I need it, amen, to get into heaven. Amen. You know, in the book of Daniel, in the 12th chapter, Marlon, if you can grab that real quick for me. Daniel, the 12th chapter. I don't even know if I can bump into it here easily. Verse number 1. Daniel concludes this, this. This book of Daniel concludes like this. He says, At that time shall Michael stand up, the great priest which stands for the children of thy people, and there shall be a time of trouble such as never was since there was a nation, even to the same time. And at that time thy people shall be delivered, every one that shall be found written in the book. And many of them that sleep in the dust of the earth shall awake, some to everlasting life, some to shame and everlasting contempt. He said, And they that be wise shall shine as the brightness of the firmament, and they that turn many to righteousness as the stars forever and ever. He said, but Daniel, shut up the words, seal the book, even to the time of the end. Church, that's where we are. The book's open. He said, many shall run to and fro, and knowledge shall be increased. And generally speaking, I would say to you, or I would say to anybody, I would agree with you that it's a good thing to have knowledge. I would say to you that smarts are good, education's good, skills are good, abilities are good, but you know what I see happening to the generation that you and I are in? And it's not so much that it's going to impact or affect me personally, but I can see my kids are affected, and I'll bet your kids are affected. And your grandkids are affected. 
that there is so much knowledge, there's so much information, there's so much stuff being pushed at them. I mean, it's coming in volumes, just pushed on them in, in, in every area of life that they are receiving information that is contradictory to everything I've talked here to you tonight about God and about the Lord Jesus Christ and the creative power of the Word of God. They're not hearing that anymore. And you look around you, you don't see them in church, do you, to hear it anymore. What they're hearing is that there's no God. What they're hearing is that this space thing is just out there. We don't know where it came from or where it went. Oh, boom, there's a big explosion sometime 14 billion years ago. And then all of a sudden, this just evolved into, into and you know what that, that results in? Faithlessness, godlessness. There, there's, not any, there's not any trust in Jesus. That's the generation behind me. Now I'm telling you this. The Lord said, when I come again, will I find faith on the earth? You know what that tells me? Is that when He comes again, there's going to be more carnality and there's going to be more godlessness. There's going to be more contradictory elements to this than ever before because people are not going to believe the Word. Church, if He comes in my day, He's going to find faith on the earth because He's going to find me. But if I go, if I depart, if all of us leave and then He comes, that's a good question. Will He find faith on the earth? And I hope He does. Because that's the only thing, amen, that will deliver the soul that needs saving. is faith in God's Word. Faith in the blood of Jesus Christ. Faith in the Lord. Amen? He is still on the throne. Amen. I believe that. And I'm glad I got to preach that to you one more time. And I hope that you are glad you heard it. Yes. Would you stand up and let's just thank the Lord this evening again for His sweet.